Um, good morning, evening and afternoon from wherever all of y'all are joining in. Um, we are super thrilled to have you uh, as a part of this webinar, which is hosted by the Global Tapestry of Alternatives. Um, in a time of global crisis where we are all immersed in trying to battle adversities of climate change, uh, socioeconomic inequality, homogenization, cultural colonization, uh, political conflicts, uh, GTA was spawned. Uh, GTA, which is an initiative which was formed during the COVID period, um, with an aim to respond to all, all of these crises with the help of constructive alternatives, which are being practiced globally. Um, the wish or the aim is to reimagine other ways of being, knowing, working, and dreaming. Um, you can find out more about GTA. There will be a link pasted in the chat. Um, and we'll also uh, link in an email just in case um, anyone wants to reach out. Um, Learning for Alternative Futures uh, is the group which is uh, hosting this webinar. Uh, it was founded as a coalition by seven various networks uh, with the one aim of rethinking and uh, reimagining learning uh, the way we know it today. Uh, part of this uh, group are seven networks, namely uh, Ecoversities, uh, Radical Ecological Democracy, Wellbeing Economy Alliance, the Alternative Projects or TAP, Pedagogue, um, Educer, um, and the GTA. You can read more about them in this slide. And uh, you can also find out more about some of the previous webinars that were conducted by this group in the link again that will be pasted in the chat. Um, and as you all know, this is a second in a two-part series, uh, which will be talking about the initiative of Travelers University in India. Uh, Travelers University is a part of uh, Vikalp Sangam, which is one of the four weavers uh, of Global Tapestry. Uh, and we bring you this two-part series to show how in the Indian context, travel can be an experiential method of pedagogy. Uh, Travelers University's programs are very much based on regenerative livelihoods, or as they call it, a livelihoods. Um, in the former session of this two-part webinar series, we had uh, four co-curators, creators of uh, Travelers University who came in to introduce their work along with uh, sh sharing some of their experiences and anecdotes um, that led them to thinking of alternatives to this mainstream, uh, the mainstream educational practices. They also introduced a livelihoods, um, which is again, like I mentioned, livelihoods uh, of intentional living and lifelong learning for a sustainable, equitable and just world. In today's session, we'll be hosting fellows from the 52 Parinde Fellowship, which is uh, Travelers University's eight month, eight month long immersive program uh, for exploring research interests along through, through the medium of Parindes. We'll explain all of these terms. And uh, for that, we'll have to dive right into the session. And uh, I will invite Ashik uh, to come and start the session. Thank you. Thank you, Urvi. Uh, thanks for that wonderful introduction. Hello, everyone. Uh, once again, welcome and thank you for joining. Uh, my name is Ashik Krishnan and I am with Travelers University, a learning community um, committed to exploring alternative uh, pedagogies for learning, very particularly uh, travel as a pedagogy for learning. So in today's session, we will be exploring. Uh, in today's session, we'll be exploring um, the uh, or the, or the long term fellowship that we offer, which is fifty two Parinde Fellowship, and the context of the fellowship, which is the pursuit of a livelihoods. Uh, so to begin with, we would like to know, uh, detail a bit about the converging crisis of our current time. 
So one is with respect to increasing inequalities, uh, not just in India, but across the world. Uh, so in India, the situation is that like 5% of people own over 60% of the nation's wealth. Uh, if you look at the world to the figures around 1% of people globally own around 43% of the global wealth. Um, and when it comes to income distribution also, there is like one top, the top 1% of the population earn 22% of the income while the bottom 50% uh, earns make 13%. And this, we have seen it increasing and ever since COVID, this, is, this has only been increasing. Uh, so this is one of the crises that we are in. Uh, and the second is with respect to a lot of jobs being replaced either with technology or with cheaper labor. Um, so with uh, we are currently going through a phase of for phase which we call the fourth industrial revolution. Uh, the first one was in the 1800s, which was uh, about utilizing uh, like high, uh, mechanization, it's using uh, the power of water and steam. Uh, and the second that happened in the early 1900s uh, using electricity. And uh, the third that happened in the late 1900s using electronics and IT. And now we, we are uh, like in a space where like there is... Um, artificial intelligence, uh, autonomous vehicles, um, then material science, um, and, and, like, and different kinds of uh, nanotechnology, or different, kind, different forms of technology coming together and uh, which, uh, which is forming a, or causing a threat to uh, very many jobs and livelihoods. So there's also something that we look back, uh, you know, uh, when it comes to like something that uh, and Gandhi wrote uh, like way back in 1909 in his book Hind Swaraj, uh, the like where he spoke about machinery and mechanization and how uh, machinery or mechanization should be for uh, saving uh, the I mean, reducing the labor of the people but not removing the laborer from the production uh, cycle. Uh, and we can re and and today we can replace the word mechanization with technology because that is uh, where uh, things are moving ahead. Also, there's a screenshot from a movie I like, Before Sunrise, and uh, which says that like people always talk about how great technology is, how it saves all the time, but what good is if save time is not uh, used by anybody? It just turns into more busy work. Uh, so uh, who owns uh, the means of protection or who, who owns the technology and who benefits out of it or something that we're questioning and, uh, and, a lot, and a lot of uh, jobs and careers that are, are at threat in today's time. And we also see climate collapse as a symptom of something larger. Uh, we see that um, it is uh, the, the countries or the communities who are the least who are least contributing to the climate crisis who are affected the most um, and for all of this we see that uh, like uh, the problem the bigger problem is a much deeper one which is in the economic model the dominant economic model that we all are a part of which is capitalism and we are also experiencing crisis of health um, both mental and physical uh, and uh, with and then several forms of like uh, like health issues such as cancer and inflammatory issues are like are, are ever increasing. Um, so we see that like our health is tied to the health of the land, that our well-being is tied to the well-being of other humans, flora, fauna, microbes, and every other part of our ecosystems. So we cannot uh, just uh, solely looking at health in terms of the in an individual crisis or like individuals' health issues. But uh, at a larger systemic level, it is again the uh, dominant model of economics that, that is failing our uh, health at large. And amidst all of these crises, we see that, that uh, a lot of young people are concerned. Uh, and that is evident from the kind of uh, youth movements and the youth uprisings that, that uh, we have been seeing, uh, not just in India, but across the world, uh, such as Five Days to Future, uh, Extinction Rebellion. Um, and very many other uh, youth groups and communities. Um, and uh, there is also this new term, like eco-anxiety, that, that has dropped up uh, for us uh, because uh, the future, uh, the, there are no clear pathways for a uh, easier future when it comes to, when as we are facing uh, the plural climate collapse and uh, 
social issues. So our question or our exploration is, um, what what could be the pathways? Uh, what could be the pathways from this the, this, the convergent crisis that that we are experiencing currently or going through currently? Uh, so one of it is about uh, resistance and reform movements, uh, resistance which is like working on or against the current system and uh, calling out the issues or problems with the dominant system. And uh, reformation is about like, working within the system and like making some small dents uh, within the system so that like a larger change can happen gradually. And the second is about like reimagining and recreating grounded alternatives, which we also speak at uh, Vikalp Sangam and at Global uh, Tapestry of Alternatives too, uh, where the focus is on reimagining and conceptualizing and generating uh, newer models or um, or maybe recreating systems uh, which may be uh, extensions from the past uh, and uh, collectively working towards a more inclusive and just world. But how does it how does this work? Let's let's explore. And also at a personal level, like there are three approaches that one could take. Uh, so one is about right utilization of the resources that one has access to. Second is about protection and conservation of resources that one has access to. And the third is about production and regeneration. And we see that like any, any form of transformation, any kind of transformative activity uh, involves uh, at least one of these elements and, uh, and at times like most of these elements, uh, even though the focus could be on in, 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 in a specific kind of approach, uh, but we see that like almost like all these approaches kind of coexist uh, when, when we are trying to create or build uh, a more easier uh, world for everyone. Uh, not just for humans, but for the rest of us as well. So our exploration at Travelers University has been, uh, can there be livelihoods that take into account all of these? Uh, because like as adults, we spend about one third of our lifetime being engaged in our livelihood. So can these livelihoods be oriented towards social, ecological, and personal well-being? And these three aspects we uh, explored in the uh, previous webinar too, that uh, like through each of our learning programs, uh, one of the focus is on understanding self or uh, building our own relationship with our own self, which is directly, which is integral to a uh, person, uh, building personal well-being. And then second is uh, understanding or building relationship with communities and people around, which is integral to, uh, in the integral for like uh, social well-being. And the third being uh, building our connection with the rest of nature, which is integral to ecological well-being. So can there be livelihoods that take into account all of these as uh, like has been our exploration and our pursuit. So it is in this context that uh, we uh, call these livelihoods a livelihoods, uh, livelihoods that uh, make both the pursuer of the livelihood and the planet experience a certain aliveness, uh, a certain thriving, where uh, livelihoods where life is at the center rather than the livelihood in itself. Uh, because in a lot of uh, modern day jobs or careers, we see that uh, one designs one's life around the job or career that that they are into. Uh, but uh, can but can we reverse this thought process? Can we design our life based on the kind of values and principles that we would like to lead, uh, and then our livelihood being part of the life that we would like to lead? And as uh, shared earlier, like livelihoods that are oriented towards. The well-being of like you know, social, ecological, and personal, personal well-being. Uh, so the, there are like you no know, several uh, examples to share when it comes to uh, different ways of being and doing and dreaming and and working towards this, towards it. Uh, so when it comes to say learning and education, we have like from after-school learning centers to uh, agroecology uh, or to integrating agroecology and education to uh, ensuring uh, rights, right to education for the oppressed communities to uh, working on model schools uh, where uh, the size creativity and imagination is, is nurtured. There are several ways of being and doing when it comes to the domain or the area of learning and education. And when it comes to environment and ecology too, um, there are like several approaches, like there are community conservation uh, initiatives and um, people bringing together the traditional knowledge systems and uh, modern uh, science and technology together. 
and when it comes to food and farming there are uh, people who are who have designed courses on the politics of food who are engaging with uh, the the topic of food in academic spaces uh, there are people uh, people who travel across uh, the country and uh, help build uh, permaculture um, centers uh, and there are people who are working on organic and natural ways of farming which are like non toxic methods of farming and helping more supporting more organic uh, more farmers in their locality to shift towards organic and when it comes to uh, facilitation uh, uh, there are like several art space facilitation initiatives uh, ones that use theater as a mode for facilitating social social uh, transformation uh, there are groups which use uh, music uh, as as a mode to uh, inculcate social change there are several approaches when it comes to art space facilitation and for social in, in terms of social enterprises too there are like several communities which uh, ensure that uh, the actual producers receive uh, the the maximum the returns majority of the returns and at the same time taking care of the rest of nature and not uh, extracting from it but like working with the rest of nature to build better livelihoods for people in the community and when it comes to uh, media too so there are um, several uh, kinds of work that we see uh, from people who walk along uh, the whole stretches of rivers and document uh, each and every aspect of the river, such as uh, the ecology, uh, the culture, the history, uh, the biodiversity. There are uh, filmmakers who travel across the country and document stories uh, of alternative education initiatives. Uh, there are community media practitioners who are amplifying the voices of the community uh, members and uh, using that to you know, fight against illegal mining and so on. So these are like some of the examples that uh, that uh, that have been like documented uh, through the Fukito Parinde Fellowship, which we will be uh, going in detail in, in a few minutes. So we see that a livelihoods, such livelihoods, you know, help us shift the pattern from the world as we know it to the world as we want it to be. Uh, it shifts the pattern from extraction and consumption to conservation and regeneration, from profit for just a few to prosperity for all. Uh, from scarcity mindset to abundance mindset. So um, through the kind of schooling that like a lot of us have gone through, um, the kind of, the a certain scarcity mindset have been like inculcated in us. Uh, we have been told, we have been taught from our childhood that uh, the resources are scarce, that one has, and, and hence one has to be aggressive enough, agile enough to gather and accumulate them. Uh, but at the very dysfunctional state of this, we also see, uh, of this habit, we also see the kind of um, resource depletion that that, that is happening. Uh, and uh, so one one another pattern that, that we see that allows the capacity shift is from this, from self-care to self and community care. Uh, because like all forms of care involves at least another person, it, it involves the rest of nature. Uh, so uh, removing, uh, so not uh, being in our like isolated cells or like in our isolated spaces, but thriving with people, thriving with the rest of nature together, uh, and shifting the pattern from competition to collaboration and cooperation. Uh, because if we look at uh, human history, to uh, like we have all survived, thrived because of the kind of uh, sharing and caring that has happened uh, across the lives. And, and obviously, like uh, the shift from dominance over nature to coexistence with the rest of nature. So, so these livelihoods, like so at, at three levels, we see that like so at, at a personal level, there is a certain intentional living that is attached to it. Uh, there is a sense of feeling alive, like uh, experiencing aliveness that, that is there. And, and along with it comes a, a sort of lifelong learning uh, because in our traditional, uh, uh, learning spaces or workspaces, learning uh, stops at a certain period or the learning is limited to a certain kind of spaces. Uh, but like at a, uh, when, when as we are in, in, in the pursuit of livelihoods, we are also responding uh, to the uh, plural cries at the same time. So and hence this element of lifelong learning that is involved. 
And um, at the community level, it aids localization and helps build more strong and resilient communities as more people engage in livelihoods. Um, and uh, at the planet level, helps to work towards social and ecological living of the planet and uh, address the climate collapse and the global inequalities. So what, what makes one's work and ways of being and doing an ally an livelihood? Uh, because one might be skilled at multiple things. One could be skilled in uh, music, dance, writing, or health, uh, health healthcare, or in any of this. Uh, so we see that it is a social context in which we uh, exercise our skills or expertise. Uh, that that makes it an, an a livelihood. So in the example that I shared earlier, too, each of the practitioners was skilled at something. One one uh, maybe in documenting or uh, or in uh, different art forms or in uh, learning and education, but like in the kind of social and ecological context uh, in which uh, they exercise their uh, skills or expertise, that helps more uh, people, communities, and the rest of nature to thrive, thus making it an livelihood. So uh, the long-term learning program that we offer, which is the 52 per day fellowship, is uh, in, uh, is for the pursuit of livelihoods for like like supporting more youth in in pursuing such livelihoods. Uh, so the design of the uh, learning program or the fellowship is that uh, the fellows directly learn from the livelihood practitioners. So each fellow uh, explores or pursues those areas that they wish to engage in the long term. First, so uh, someone it could be like food system, someone else it could be independent media, someone else it could be place based learning systems, and so on. Uh, so each each fellow meets with around seven to eight different uh, individuals or collectives or communities, people who are already working in those areas, and the the fellows spend about two weeks with each of them, uh, observing their work, involving their work, engaging in their work, thus having a direct learning experience for themselves. And along with it, the fellows also document the stories of these initiatives, uh, of, of how they came to be doing what they're doing, uh, the worldviews that, that are involved in their work and so on. Uh, so when we look at it, like why most young people in India um, still go for the same mainstream jobs or careers, one of the reasons is also because they are very relatable. As in there's a clear understanding as to or what kind of uh, life would you know would such a job or career entail? Um, but when it comes to these livelihoods, uh, it, since it is not part of a mainstream discourse, it's not part of a mainstream uh, or day-to-day -day discussions. Uh, one, we might not know many people who are working in these areas, and uh, we wouldn't know what would such a livelihood entail. Uh, so as we are facilitating and so supporting, uh, like a set of youth. Uh, through the fellowship directly, uh, through the documentation that that are being created, that are doc through the documentation that's made by the fellows, uh, it creates more avenues for more young people to get to know about such pathways, such possibilities. So uh, the facilitation of livelihoods through the Fukito Parande Fellowship is at two levels: one directly at the fellow level, where there's a direct learning and practice that is happening for the fellows. Um, and to uh, we we are meant we as the team we mentor and handhold the fellows, uh, not just through the uh, program, uh, but also like after, uh, and and we are collectively building a certain ecosystem uh, for for supporting more people uh, to pursue their areas of their choice, and through the community level, uh, I mean for at, at at a community level through the documentation that is being made. Um, so there are two kinds of documentation that are uh, done. One, the story of the Parandes or the allied practitioners whom they meet, um, uh, which is about visibilizing the work of the allied practitioner, familiarizing the allied in itself uh, for more people by telling the story and offering relatable role models for the same. And another kind of documentation that happens is uh, the documentation of allied in itself. So if someone is interested in pursuing his livelihood, uh, what is the kind of knowledge, skill set, and mindset that they should be building? Um, what are the kind of challenges and opportunities that one may come across in such a, a pathway? And also, what are the resources that are readily available to us in the commons? 
uh, that could be in terms of books, films, documentaries, workshops offered in the country, organizations, and so on. Uh, so we collate these as well and make it uh, in the make it available in the public platform uh, to facilitate arrivals at a at a larger community level. So this is a uh, uh, an ecosystem that we are gradually building with more other uh, youth initiatives and youth organizations uh, in the country. Uh, so as of now, like the the online platform, which is the website, is is now live. Uh, th so through the platform, we are putting together uh, resources like organized information on different livelihoods, opportunities that are there in terms of volunteering opportunities or work opportunities that are in the sector and different workshops or courses uh, or programs that are offered uh, are, are being uh, made available, curated and put together uh, in the, uh, through, through the, or, and made available through the workshop. Uh, so sorry, through the, uh, platform or the website. So that is uh, a bit to share about the pursuit of Eli Lewis and the Free to Parinde Fellowship. And now I would like to invite some of the fellows themselves uh, to share their experiences of the fellowship um, and how it, is, uh, how it has led to uh, what they are uh, doing now. So maybe I'll invite Anil first. Anil. Yes. Good evening, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, Anil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh... Uh, so myself, Anil Uppalapati. Uh, I, I was a first corridor fellow in Travelers University. Uh, uh, so when I was doing fellowship, it was a six months fellowship, uh, right after the COVID second wave, I was searching for something where I can, uh, so I was not in a mood to take up any job after, uh, my studies and all. then I was exploring, uh, many things, uh, uh initially I, I went to other fellowship called Gandhi fellowship which focus on uh, uh, learning outcomes of the rural children. And then when I was in UG, uh, where uh, I got affected because of the food habits uh, that I uh, changed uh, while I was growing. Uh, so, but uh, after that, uh, we, uh, because of many reasons, I also took up other fellowship and went and explored. Then while COVID, when COVID hit, uh, uh, so I started hearing a lot about the food and how food has been grown, how it is affecting the human health, everything. Then uh, after the COVID wave, uh, coming back from Bihar, I started searching for the opportunities where I can go uh, volunteer, learn, uh, uh, growing food, uh, how to grow food naturally and all. Then uh, since I was having um, uh, some uh, land where with my father, I was uh, thinking to start up my own farm and start growing food and uh, give it to my family at least. Uh, uh, in that in that way, I was actually searching for opportunities, but uh, I was not getting anything because of the COVID and all. Then I uh, this fellowship got to uh, one of my friends suggested me very good up. Then uh, I would say the fellowship. Uh, uh, one thing that I actually chose without uh, consulting anyone from the childhood, uh, this uh, habit of consulting or uh, many decisions were taken by the parents. Then uh, because of the society that we grow in, we tend to take a lot of other decisions. But this was the decision I took for myself. Ki I have to start exploring. And it was a risk sort of thing uh, at that time because I was not earning anything. But uh, fellowship got inspired. The, the, uh, the way that fellowship was designed, I, that actually uh, attracted me. Then during the fellowship, I, uh, I, I, I started fellowship with a lot of questions and a lot of uh, learnings that I have from my childhood. And then when I started meeting people, going and staying with the strangers and learning from them and law, 
I started unlearning a lot of things. Uh, more than what I learned, I, I would say I unlearned a lot of things. And a lot of doubts ca start coming up. Uh, when I started fellowship, I was thinking I will uh, get whatever I want and then I'll come back and start my own firm. But things uh, got me differently. When I started meeting people and learning from them, staying with them and documenting their life stories, I realized there are a lot to learn. Uh, it is not a, something which is very, uh, very one thing that I can learn within a week or two or six months. Then that actually helped me to uh, dive deeper into the topic that I chose to choose for the long term. Then uh, it actually helped me to uh, improve my skill of documenting and uh, and uh, actually it, it taught me how to travel minimalistic, not spending a lot of money and how to actually stay with the strangers, how to make new friends. A lot of things, a lot of things I would say. It, it is one thing uh, like uh, when people are in a lot of interviews, people ask you what is your biggest achievement. Before fellowship, I, I would say I could not uh, show something. It was my biggest achievement because a lot of things happened without my uh part in that but fellowship was one thing that i actually chose i put all my efforts and i took risk and uh, it actually gave me a lot of wonder uh, wonderful people and a uh, good mentors with me right even today i actually speak to travelers university people for a lot of stuff and this thing and uh, after the fellowship also uh, i i because I, when I was doing fellowship, I understood that there are a lot to learn. Uh, to continue with uh, what I learned from there and wh what are the doubts I have, I started uh, searching, searching for a few organizations of people who are working with the uh, farmers, uh, in encouraging sustainable way of growing food and all. Then. I uh, found to uh, meet a uh, Vasan. Uh, Vasan is an organization based in Hyderabad who works on sustainable agriculture and uh, natural resource management. Now I'm engaging with them from the past one and a half year, working on sustainable agriculture practices and nutrition. Uh, that is how I have been. Uh, right now I am uh, working with Vasan and developing a center uh, which will uh, which will uh, uh, document our disseminate uh, knowledge that is that is required uh, like what uh, travelers university started to document the uh, stuff that is not available to the public uh, a sort of that we are trying to establish here in hyderabad as well uh, that is that is what my experience and that's how the journey I took during the fellowship is uh, with me, I would say. So that is, that, that actually uh, brought me to Vasan and hopefully it will, uh, I'll continue doing this. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Anil. Um, yeah. yeah, I'll invite Kavya to share next. Uh... Hi. Uh, I hope I'm visible. I'm Kavya. Uh, I'm from Hyderabad. Uh, so my fellowship journey uh, began with a lot of, again, uh, confusion and chaos. Uh, so after uh, my education background, at least has been in the academic space, uh, mostly towards humanities, because that was one subject I could relate to always uh, in the sense of the uh, if I read history, it reminded me of what my origins were, or it made me question where I belong to, and all of that. And after my education, I I I was strongly uh, against going towards a mainstream job or having a routine in life in general because of the exposure. I believe. Uh, so I started going back to my village itself and started farming there, and uh, then like I started working with the local community understanding why farmers were turning into laborers because of the crisis that the market 
has been constantly fostering upon them. And that created a lot of challenges because it was not an easy thing coming from a uh, from an educational program, like even if I had a macro picture, it was not very as a acclimatizing for me to work in a regional space, in a local space. So that created a lot of questions ki what, if I needed a skill set or if I am doing the right thing or if whatever I was trying to uh, engage with made any sense altogether. So my quest throughout the fellowship journey was to understand the intentions and the value systems people carried when they were trying to work with communities that that face different challenges from what one can face as an individual. So uh, I tried to explore for Indians like we call them, uh, those who were engaged into agriculture, education, uh, creating a livelihood through art all of these mediums and how there is an interrelation between each other and how holistically it becomes an ecosystem that can probe towards a concept of change. So yeah, that is one thing I try to explore through my journey. And since my journey was mostly associated with rural and tribal regions in India, uh, I also wanted to understand the root causes of these issues. And post my fellowship journey, I joined with a, an organization that works in a human rights uh, sphere uh, that tries to provide some kind of a legal facilitation to the communities to uh, resolve their issues of some kind. So on one side, I feel like my journey has been about finding the joy in the community that I have been able to gain through traveling to different regions, through meeting people who are initiating uh, different ideas. And also post the fellowship journey, it, it has also been uh, a kind of a re reflection and retrospection where I can reconnect with what has gone through. I can reconnect with the journey and also let the journey lead my future or whatever I want to do, how I can connect these two and the whole interconnection is something like I take away from the whole uh, initiative that Travelist University has been able to provide. Thanks, thanks Kavya and like Pangal also invited Kamal to share this fellowship experience. Yeah. So hi, Ashi. Hi. -o. So uh, I'm Amal. I'm from Kerala. And uh, I'm the first batch uh, fellow. So how my journey was started, like uh, when I'm doing PG, after my uh, PG, so I was thinking about what will I do next. I don't have any idea, but I don't want to do any kind of typical NGO jobs or something like that. So I was searching for something I have to, if I have to travel, uh, when I'm doing something, if it, it, it is involved in travel, then it will be interesting. And so I'm interested in that thing. So when I was searching in the Google and I didn't get. So and the next day, very unfortunately, like the, uh, accidentally, I just checked my uh, WhatsApp group of college. Then I saw the Travelers University browser so i just applied for this so that was the way i got this fellowship so uh, at that time also uh, i was working uh, i was doing volunteering in one organization say uh, adivasi uh, and Delhi students collective so in that uh, in that at that time also i was uh, i understand that there, there are a lot of uh, issues that they are facing whenever we are when, when i'm in the time of my, uh, when the time of my pg period also i when we are learning, there are a lot of uh, uh, problems with the tribal education or, uh, or the marginalized communities, the, uh, their uh, higher education enrollment ratio is very low. There are uh, uh, other, they, they, there are a lot of dropouts are happening. And so uh, when I'm uh, involving with these uh, people, then I, I need to uh, know more about the communities in the different parts of India. And for me, like 
my education also was like it's a kind of an experiment that like uh, i was in the higher uh, higher secondary time i was like uh, in studying the science but then i understand that science is not my area then i just chose some like uh, commerce then then i understand that and it's not my interest area so it take so many so many years that what i really want to uh, what i am interested there was no one help me to okay this is my interest area there, there is no other way to uh, uh, pick my interest area during my education so my education itself was a kind of an experiment thing so I, i just want to explore about education and all. so when i when i really want to uh, explore about this uh, learning and education this alternative learning i have a very narrow idea when i am started uh, this fellowship so uh, after that so i at that time also i understand that this is not not the right way to uh, learn or right way to get education and all. but i don't know how how it will be like i didn't get the answer so i i, just, I was at that time i was looking for the answer for how the education will be so when i am started the uh, this fellowship uh, my first two space i i didn't uh, i was just go there and I just uh, stay in that place and talk with the my uh, my parent this then uh, I, i just documented like uh, their uh, journey and all so Mm, at that time i didn't uh, uh, give something back to them because i i didn't get the opportunity to do that so uh, in second space my uh, one of my parent they asked me uh, what should why what are you what are the things you are giving back when you are when you are staying in one place and so i don't have any answer the, so at the third place itself i started doing uh, so many volunteering works and uh, I, there are a lot of fast things in doing the, those things like uh cow shed cleaning or something like gardening and all, all so many things i was started doing uh, during this fellowship so after that also uh after in this fellowship also i uh, understand like i the the freedom how much how the freedom is important in a, when a learning space like i when i'm uh, went to so many uh, different learning spaces in different parts of india so at that time i understand that how how the uh, how much importance they are given to the freedom and how how the result will be very different the people are, the children are very happy uh, so at that time i, I understand uh, those things like that and uh, when i am when i am uh, staying with these people so, so i feel very alive when uh, uh, when i work uh, when i am staying with them or when i am engaging with their works are also then i feel alive and what i felt at that time when we are talking uh, the people who are doing in mainstream jobs or something like that they will be very stressed frustrated uh, always talk like that so when i am interacting with them or when when this uh, people who are chosen this livelihood i i also feel very alive and i also felt like they are also uh, like very happy they, they are doing these things also so uh, uh, yeah so uh, after that also when uh, when i went to one space that i, I understand that there is a if, if you want to transform anything if there is a transformation happen there will be uh, there will be a struggle and creation so in the struggle in the sense of we have to be struggle against the existing system uh, and the creation we have to create the spaces and so I, at that time also i was thinking about which which way i have to choose which which side i have to go so at that time also i was thinking about that and what i uh, what i learned from most from this fellowship is like that I, when before the fellowship i was like very kind of uh, if i want to do something i also i was so happy that i want to do this thing and all but when i am after this fellowship uh, so i was like being slow if you want to really achieve something or if you want to be uh, complete something we have to be be slow so at that thing uh, and enjoy that journey so at that, that thing i really learned from this uh, fellowship also and uh, after this fellowship was like uh, this fellowship also gave me the courage to what i really want to do uh, give me the courage to take the step ahead so that was the best thing i learned from this so after this fellowship also i just i'm currently working as a social worker in tribal department uh, it's a kind of government job it's a contract basis so uh, why i chosen this thing like uh, when i'm doing this thing i, I can easily like interact with the different community in the kerala tribal communities in the like i i i get easily access to them and i, I can understand what are the things happening there and all. and 
uh, also during uh, what are what are the things i learned from this fellowship i got the opportunity to apply in these spaces also so uh, that's the thing after uh, what happened after this fellowship also. so that was my journey yeah. that's it thanks thanks amal thanks all three anil kavya and amal um, yeah and i think we'll can open for q and a now if you have any questions to ask any of the fellows or me or anyone yeah space is open Uh, so a participant is asked uh, what happens once the fellowship is over once a uh, fellowship is over so like uh, so there are like multiple uh, parts to it so like uh, so we have a we have an online pre orientation which is a beginning of the fellowship where we have uh, where we host multiple sessions on Uh, understanding the interconnectedness between sectors, so exploring the flower of alternative transformation emerges through the Wilkinson process. One of it, and then we also go deeply into you know some of these areas, like uh, we explore the area of like the politics of food, um, uh, gender, caste, um, localization, and so on. So we have a set of you know like sessions, interactions with. uh subject experts uh, or like people who have been working in those areas that happens and then we have a two week long orientation where we uh, go a little more deeper into our own selves like for the fellows like to uh, look inward um about the kind of journeys that they wish to take up about the kind of uh, domain areas that they wish to explore uh in through the fellowship and then the next four four and a half months is a travel period where uh they meet with and learn from the allied group practitioners uh directly and then we have another two week long uh, reflection workshop where we reflect on the journey so far um and articulate the plans ahead yeah so that is the process and um once once the fellowship is complete to like we are in uh regular touch with the fellows and so in the reflection workshop also like something might come up what um based on what what they intend to do further ahead so we uh try to connect them with like people communities initiatives um so, so that they can uh go further uh, deeper into that process yeah so that is how it looks like maybe the fellows can share themselves like what their course experience has been to yeah thanks thanks ashish yes also in the chat box i have shared the link of the book that has been co-created by the fellows uh, the stories of the allied practitioners that they met with and learned from uh and which which have been document which uh, are are documented by the fellows and the book also includes a uh, personal reflections learnings and insights of uh the uh fellows and also another section on alive news that offers structural information on some of the alive areas that the fellows explored yeah yes mukta yeah uh so first of all thank you so much everybody for giving us your time this was a really informative webinar and it really deepened our understanding of both alternatives and livelihoods in the pedagogy space uh, my question is a bit more reflective i think um so obviously it's the third cohort now you've had two previous cohorts has your experience of learning about how to share about alternatives with your newer fellows changed over time have you have you um changed the way that you express things across each cohort yes yes totally uh, so the design has evolved like across the three cohorts and 
uh, first year we announced it as a um, four four and a half months fellowship um, and but it it went beyond like five months of the first quarter. so the, the second year we said okay this is going to be a six month long program um, and the online sessions were introduced in the second year the first year we had those sessions with people while we were in a physical space during the actual orientation so second year we changed the design a bit like the online sessions we had it before we came together um, and third year now it is an eight month long program uh, a little more deeper and like more processes have come into place um, and like we have like more ses online sessions to that happens you know prior to the orientation and also throughout the program throughout the fellowship like so one thing that uh, we have experienced is that so there's a lot of like intense experiences uh, that the fellows go through uh, and at times it gets uh, a little bit challenging to process all the same. Uh, so this year we have uh, the support of a, a friend who is a, a counselor, listener, um, yeah, so who is, who is in touch with the fellows throughout, uh, whom the fellows can reach out to and like those you no know, conversations are you no know, confidential and interest and so in, uh, so that that kind of a listening space and that kind of a holding space is offered uh, to the fellows uh, through this uh, through the friend uh, through the counselor friend so like a few a few um, uh, res new responses to the different needs that have come up uh, that way you know some um, yeah changes have happened in the program Thank you so much. That was very enlightening. Thank you. Uh, we've got about five minutes left. So if anybody has any quick questions, please. Uh, hi, Mar hi, Marjorie. Yes. Um. I am very, very interested in this methodology and possibilities for um, building alternatives. Um, I, I have downloaded the book and I was just thinking if we were to follow this example, I was trying to imagine what it would take for us to pull it off. We, we have communities that are organized all over the country but um, and who do different things. So I can imagine a journey of um, fellows or whatever we call them to these different communities. But um, it it it's just it's a really big operation to get it right and have all the support that's needed. So I just wanted to say thank you.